Hello, this is Mark Wildman of Wildman Athletica, and today we're going to talk about the hows and the whys of kettlebell training so that you can get at least 10 years out of your kettlebell training. Kettlebell training has always been the best way to get the most athletic development in the least amount of time, but the training changes over time. And the advice for kettlebell training should change over time as well. When I first got into training 20 years ago, the advice was kettlebell bent presses and kettlebell snatches. And that is excellent advice. If you do just those two exercises and you complement it with any other type of training, that will be a very good program. That training changed not long after that advice was put out and it became kettlebell swings and kettlebell Turkish get-ups. This comes from the classic idea laid out by Pavel, the first guy to popularize modern kettlebell training after the year 2000. And that was get 10 minutes of swings and do five to 10 minutes of Turkish get-ups, do each one twice a week. And that advice can complement any other type of training. If you play a sport, if you do 10 minutes of swings twice a week and you do five minutes of Turkish get-ups twice a week, it will work into a great program. If you are somebody who goes to the gym and does bodybuilding, putting in swings twice a week and putting in Turkish get-ups twice a week will complement any bodybuilding program. If you climb mountains, it's great advice. If you're a swimmer, it's great advice. If you're a martial artist, it's a great advice. The problem is that in the last 20 years, the population has gotten substantially more sedentary and the quality of available food has gotten worse. Obesity beyond overweight is now almost 40% of the population. As the population changes, the advice has to change with it. Seven out of 10 people who walk in to study kettlebells or to get what they want out of kettlebells can no longer just start at a swing program. So we have to change the starting point of training. The goal is still to get to a swing program, but now a lot of people may need six months to a year before they get to a swing program. The first things that you should work on if you are heavier than you would like to be, if you are deconditioned, either because of injury or because your job requires you to be sedentary, you need to work on a box squat. That is just holding a kettlebell in front of you, getting down to a target height and standing up, starting with a very light weight. The original weight recommendations don't work anymore either, and we'll talk about that in a minute. A box squat, a suitcase deadlift, and then an overhead press. Our goal is to get people good at just standing all the way up. People can't usually jump straight into swings anymore because they can no longer stand all the way up their body is adapted to sitting. That means they can't straighten their legs all the way. That means that they can't push their hips all the way forward. So when they start trying to do a swing program, they shove all the load into the small muscles in the low part of their back and they get hurt or they cannot continue with the normal math of a swing program. So there are about 25 breakdown exercises that we do. I call this whole idea training for overweight or deconditioned individuals and we have people running a squat, a deadlift, and a press program with a light kettlebell. People have run it up to 10 months repeatedly before they go to the breakdown drills where they learn to pick it up to clean position so that they can learn to stand up better. People have to learn to stand up better before they do the swing program. So people used to start at the swing program in the get-up program, but now we have a whole section of training in front of that where you force the core to engage in a standing position and we make it substantially less difficult on the heart so that people want to continue training. It seems like a subtle shift, but it's not. It's a really big deal. The goal of training is not just to look good. The goal of training is to not be in pain anymore. The goal of training should be to lead a better quality of life. We can define that pretty simply as going places you've never gone before, doing things you've never done before, and talking to people you've never talked to before so that you can learn new things so you can get more experience. This is different than a lot of modern training. A lot of modern training is about looking cool, not about being cool. The goal of kettlebell training is to help you learn to do cool things, so that you can have a good life. We have our intro program, training for overweight and deconditioned individuals. It's a squat, it's a press, it is a deadlift. We move from there into breakdown drills so that people can learn 
to hold a kettlebell without hurting their arm so that they can then learn in the future a clean and press so that they can learn a Turkish get up. So think, get good at standing, get good at holding a kettlebell. Then we go into a swing program and a swing program might repeat at the minimum 10 times through with a lightweight and going to a heavyweight. The old recommendation was do 10 sets of 10 twice a week with one weight for a month and then maybe go up in weight. Now we need more time to adapt so we add more weight to the concept. We now have things like adjustable kettlebells which did not exist 20 years ago. So we can get smaller weight jumps so we can have more time to adapt. The side effect is the outcome is better. Once we do our swing program and we get good at it, then we move to our clean and press program, getting a weight up to shoulder height and learning to stand all the way up. Single kettlebell first. All of this thus far that we've talked about is single kettlebell because it is less expensive and it is easier on the body and it forces more core contraction. It exposes weaknesses between the left side and the right side of the body that a lot of gym equipment might not expose that weakness. The goal is to not be in pain and making both sides of your body, both sides of your back, both shoulders, both hands, both elbows, work equally as well as how you get out of pain so you can do more stuff. Training for overweight and deconditioned individuals, a deadlift, a squat, a press, intro to kettlebell training, figuring out a bunch of breakdown drills to mobilize the shoulders, help you hold it better, a swing program, which helps you get your base athletic conditioning repeated 10 times, 20 times with a slightly different weight, going to a clean and press program. The goal of that program is to get men to a minimum of 24K, but the high goal for that is probably 32K. Above that, you're getting into a level that costs more money and has less benefit over time. After that, then we get to a get-up program. You can break down Turkish get-ups into about 35 different base pieces and get good at each individual piece. We used to just do Turkish get-ups. You just did them. That doesn't work very well anymore because people no longer have that base conditioning to do it. You should break Turkish get-ups down into about 35 separate pieces, practice them in a metabolic conditioning format, Start with a light K, maybe 12K, because you're not doing pure Turkish get-ups anymore. You're doing breakdown drills. Get that program to at least 24K. And then after Turkish get-ups, you can go into a squat program. Three main types of squats you should do. A single arm kettlebell front squat, holding a kettlebell on one side of the body, because you should already know how to do goblet squats from previous in the training. A deck squat, getting down to the ground, rolling on the ground and standing back up and then eventually a double kettlebell front squat. We give these three recommendations because they do stuff that is not replicated in gym training. Single arm kettlebell front squat takes all the weight, puts it in front of your body, and by having the weight on one side of your body, the other side of your core is forced to work harder. Once again, the recommendation is to help people get out of pain by balancing their body. This does not replace something like barbell squats. It is a different path of training. A kettlebell deck squat is a ground engagement. It is part of getting up off of the ground. A Turkish get up is one type of get up. A deck squat is another type of get up. The greater your range of movement in your squat, the less likely you are to get hurt when you do more hardcore types of athletics like gymnastics, circus arts, jujitsu, wrestling, riding dirt bikes, riding horses, climbing mountains. It's part of falling down and getting up. And then eventually the double kettlebell front squat is the kettlebell analog to a barbell squat. The difference is the weight's in front of your body and it's offset center of mass. So lighter weights have a greater core response. After that, then we get to snatch training because you have built all of the things up to get there. And then our goal is to get to 10 minutes of nonstop snatches with at least a 24K for men, the recommendation for women is about 70% of that, and it can go up and down based on frame size, very small frame versus taller frame. After that, then we go to metabolic conditioning. Metabolic conditioning is where we then combine all those basic movements that you've already known in different patterns every day, and our goal is to build up to not putting the kettlebell down for say five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 
one hour. This is different than other types of training. People who go to the gym, you have four sets of eight, four sets of six, five sets of 10, three sets of 10. Kettlebell training focuses on something that completely outside of gym training, which is learning to pick up an appropriate sized weight and then not put it down for a very long time. This allows people to work on their structural alignment, to work on their breathing, and to make sure every muscle in their body is firing for a very long period of time. This is how people used to operate in the world. A hundred years ago, if you worked on a farm, you picked things up and you didn't put them down all day. If you used to be a carpenter, you lifted objects and you carried them all day. If you walked from place to place and you carried a backpack, you had to carry that load as far as you had to walk. Kettlebells are one of the few types of training that replicate that idea in the modern world, and that is left out of gym training. I don't know anything in gym training that says pick up a weight and keep it moving and breathe and change complexity and do it for five minutes or 10 minutes or 20 minutes or 30 minutes. But that is a base human skill. The old kettlebell training recommendations from 15 to 20 years ago still stand, but we have to put things in front of it now and we have to have a path after that. You're not just gonna do swings twice a week for the rest of your life. You need to do it for a set amount of time. You need to set goals. You need to break your Turkish get up down into a bunch of component pieces. You need to turn it into metabolic conditioning. And then you have to then understand how to create programs, a different program five days a week for the rest of your life. 10 years is a short period of time in the length of your life. But you should train five days a week from now until the day you die. If you die when you're 110, you should still be training five days a week then. Kettlebell training is the best, easiest way to get you there. So I'm gonna keep talking about this topic a lot and we're gonna make giant playlists and lay these ideas out in clear and distinct order so that everybody can get what they want out of life. The goal is to not be in pain and to do stuff that you actually wanna do in life and then to figure out how to support that through education and equipment.